folks, welcome back to Indaba Africa. This is Chris once again. that you're eating on this flight? Yes, yes, you. You can't eat on a flight in South Africa. Aren't you keeping up with Fikele? Fikele told us no eating on flights in South Africa. Are we going to have to turn you in? You know, snitches get stitches, and I'm happy to get new stitches. Put the food down. You're endangering this flight. Now. What? Seriously? Now. Okay, fine, fine, fine. I won't eat. I won't eat. I won't drink. Here, here. Look, I'm wearing my mask. I'm wearing my mask. Here we go. See? There you go. All right. I'm wearing my mask. Are we okay now? Thank you. Damn, flight attendants. Gosh. (laughs) What? I can't read a magazine on a flight? No eating? No drinking? I can't even read a magazine? What are we? Convicted felons? Good Lord. Hey folks, welcome back to Dub After. This is Chris and wow. What you just saw was a simulation of actual events that may unfold. That's right. People listening to their earphones here, these uh, noise canceling headsets from Bose. Uh, not product placement. I'm not DJ Khalid. Bose. Anyway, no, but uh, noise canceling headsets, something to drink. Something to munch on, a little nibble on your flight, and gosh bless it, something to read. These are all things of the past. Now, South Africans got great news over the weekend as South Africa moved back into level one lockdown. Whoa, haven't been there in a long time, have we? Level one lockdown. So you'd think it'd be pretty much over. Restrictions would be rescinded and things would be back under control. Well, you'd be thinking wrong. Pay attention to what the Minister of Transport has to say. Fuck that's right. South Africa bans passengers from eating on domestic flights. Now, I'm not making it up, folks. It's an absolutely true story. They are banning people from eating on a flight. Yep. Yep. Now, this has been a problem for commercial aviation ever since the COVID pandemic started. We've had airlines fighting with passengers, kicking passengers off, banning passengers for life for not putting masks on their under two age children. Even the CDC said that children under the age of two shouldn't be wearing masks. People have been kicked off flights. All sorts of things have been happening around the world. But now South Africa has joined Thailand as the only country in the world to ban meals and catering on domestic flights. Now, Thailand's not a particularly large country, but South Africa is, well, I suppose you go way north, way south. But most of the flights in Thailand are not that far apart. Whereas in South Africa, you have some uh, rather long flights, at least two hours or longer around the country. Hmm. Now, South Africa is banning all catering, but you can still get bottled water, which you can't get in Thailand. While catering is prohibited, passengers are also not allowed to bring their own food onto the flight. So this would be prohibited, this activity. This would land me in jail on a flight in South Africa. Mm. Doritos. Mm. Well, there's more stuff going on here too. Let's talk about that. Domestic flights cannot be moving during the curfew hours. That's not a surprise though. But international flights, because of the time change, can in fact land and take off during international international flights during curfew hours. So there you have it. Wow. So alert level one. What's the point? Lots of restrictions still remain for some folks. Now, what I should say is that here's a following quote from this is from Kirby Gordon, the chief marketing officer at Fly Saf Air, which is now the largest domestic operator because we're having some problems with Com Air getting back in the air. And of course, South African Airways is bankrupt and sitting on the tarmac, what few aircraft it still has. Not having catering aboard does steal from the experience for our passengers. And it is a revenue stream that we would love during this tough time. However, not offering catering is just the right thing to do at this time. And we stand by the government's decision for strict regulation. Well, of course you do. Because if you open your mouth, <laughs> they won't let you fly. 
<laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Kirby Gordon, Chief Marketing Officer at SAF Air. Fly SAF Air. Wow. Not wearing your mask on one of their flights. If you would have to pay for the diversionary cost if they're forced to fly or land somewhere, it could charge you up as much as $7,000. It's a lot of money. Now, here's the thing, folks. Here's the thing. A few more things. International flights can come into the country at OR Tambo in Johannesburg, King Shaka in Durban, and Cape Town International Airports. Those long-haul international flights can come in during the curfew hours. But if you happen to be on one of those flights, make sure you retain evidence of your flight because you are likely to be stopped by law enforcement. If you don't have your ticket or your stub or your boarding pass or something like that, they're going to lock you up and throw you in with other people. There you go. So that's important to remember. That is very important. These are directions from South Africa's Transport Minister, Fikile Malula. Yep, he is once again at the same guy who allowed the taxi industry to pour dozens of people inside of a combi, not wearing masks, and acted as if it wasn't a problem. Interesting. So as I said, on a domestic flight, you cannot cater, no food, no meals. And the passengers can't bring their own food on either. They'll get in trouble for that. In addition to that, folks, you might have noticed I was reading a magazine, also a prohibited activity on South African flights. Well, not entirely true. You can read a magazine on a flight in South Africa, but it has to be a magazine that you brought on or it has to be a magazine that's sitting outside and you pick it up for single use. If you get caught sharing this magazine, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You cannot share your magazine. So once you get your copy, hold on to it. It's yours. Yeah, anyway, give me a break. What's interesting is that well, international flights, people can serve meals, and you can have magazines, but you can't on domestic flights. There must be some magic bubble on the flight that when you, when you touch a magazine on an international flight, magically the virus is wiped out. Same with the meals. Apparently, that's not a problem on international flights. These rules are nonsensical, and the South African government really has no idea what it's doing as it works its way through this nonsense. As far as masks on flights... Interesting to note is that according to multiple studies, actually several studies, there's very little risk on commercial aviation. This is not me speaking. I'm simply reporting the facts, folks. It was back in October that these studies were released and a news report came out. Several studies carried out by airlines, aircraft manufacturers, and government entities, all of whom have vested interest in continuing to keep aircraft in the air and people moving about, have shown that there's very little risk of viral transmission on board aircraft. Shocker there. You think with the refiltration system and people in such close quarters jammed in an economy where somebody's invading your space because they're overly large and filling up over the armrest that you'd find yourself at risk. You certainly pick up the flu more easily when you fly around a plane. But apparently there's little risk as long as a facial mask is involved. Hmm. There was one study conducted by the U.S. Department of Defense in collaboration with United Airlines in last October. Now, the DOD study found that when passengers wore a mask, they put that mask on, right? That the risk for transmission was 0.003%. That's not 30%. That's not 3%. That is three tenths of 1%. It's three hundredths. Wow. And that one would need to fly continuously for 54 hours to be at any risk of transmission, not, not a little bit, not a high percent, 54 hours of continuous flying to be at any risk. So basically they're saying as long as people wear masks on a plane, they're safe. Okay, I'll buy that. I've been wearing masks for nine months. Why are we still in the middle of this pandemic? If they're so effective, then why are we, why are we still in the middle of this? But government, aircraft manufacturers, and airlines are all telling us that it's safe to fly and that we do not need to wear ourselves. Now, I don't doubt that, but something is incongruent here. Either the masks work, as the airlines, the aircraft manufacturers, and the Department of Defense have told us, and the risk is virtually zero of catching it by wearing a mask, or they don't. Because if they work, why are we still wearing them 10 months later? Two weeks to flatten the curve, folks. Two weeks to flatten the curve. Where do we hear that? March? 2020, 12 months later, the only thing flattened is social cohesiveness, our economies, political will, and our health and safety. Wow, crazy stuff. Anyway, folks, once again, to wrap up, in South Africa on domestic flights, you cannot be served meals. You can't bring food on the flight. You're not allowed to eat. You got to keep that mask on at all times on that flight. 
which is probably a good thing, according to the Department of Defense, United Airlines, commercial aircraft carriers, and aircraft manufacturers, all of whom say that the risk is virtually non-existent as long as people wear their masks. Well, there you have it. That's some good news, I suppose. But no eating on flights in South Africa. You can't bring your own food on. You cannot share magazines. Doesn't say anything about sharing armrests, but just in the interest of safety, I'd probably not share the armrest with the person next to me if I was on a flight. Anyway, thanks a lot for tuning in, folks. So catch you here next time as we bring you ludicrous and strange decisions by South Africa's National Coronavirus Command Council and its ministers. Interesting that the transport minister put this out. Do we stop relying on the National Coronavirus Command Council to send its dictates down? If you're not a subscriber to Chris Wyatt Africa, hey, listen, we've been under attack. Why not become a subscriber and help keep this thing going? Just push that button right down there. Be sure to toggle the bell icon. And uh, give us a like if you don't mind. If you happen to see this on Odyssey, how about a little flame? Light that flame up. Tell us we're on fire. Support the channel. If you want to leave a tip of the cryptocurrency, you're welcome to do that as well on Odyssey. And if you see us on Rumble, hey, give us a Rumble. It's much appreciated. Thanks a lot for your time, your patience, and your patronage. We love your custom. Thanks a lot, folks. Take care.